Uh, I'd like to provide an introduction to ozone therapy and some of its applications that can be used both standalone and in concert with other regenerative medicine techniques, such as allograft tissue injections or platelet-rich plasma today. And before we dig into the medicinal uses of ozone, I just want to give a little background explanation on kind of what ozone is, where it's from. All of us are probably familiar with ozone uh, from its use in the ozone layer of the atmosphere. We all learned that in school, hear about the hole in the ozone layer as part of global warming, so on and so forth. Um, and essentially what ozone is, <clears throat> is it's an atmospheric gas um, that gets created when ultraviolet UV radiation hits oxygen molecules, and it actually splits the oxygen molecules in half. And then they chain back together as O3. So ozone is actually O3 versus oxygen O2. Uh, and O3 has the ability to absorb infrared radiation um, because of that chemical process that takes place at the atomic level when it's splitting apart and reconnecting. So that's how the ozone layer forms and reforms and constantly forms. But ozone is not just present in the upper layers of our atmosphere. It's also present at our ground level uh, atmosphere and even in our bodies and so forth. And it's a colorless gas made up of three oxygen atoms. In alternative therapy, it's used to increase the body's intake and processing of oxygen to hyperoxygenate local tissues. It's highly uh, disinfectant. It's antiviral. Uh, it's, it's bactericidal, fungicidal. Uh, it has the ability to ablate uh, many um, molecular things that we're looking to suppress or eliminate um, and has a lot of uses in sterilization. You may also be familiar with ozone if you've ever had a, a smell in your car or your house from water intrusion. They put a, an ozone purifier in there to scrub the air. And what that ozone machine does is it basically kills all the bacteria uh, and viruses that are in the air uh, by exposing it to ozone. It's produced when energy strikes those molecules, splits that O2 apart, and that's a process called photolysis. Um, so ozone's therapeutic effects have been explored for hundreds of years, but the first documented clinical research was published uh, on it in 1964 and was looked at uh, treating some skin diseases, some of which I'll share with you here on today's presentation. So ozone has this disinfective ability, um, and it can transport, release, carry oxygen into tissues very efficiently. That's its primary utilization. Um, and also because of that antimicrobial property, it's commonly used in surgery, OBGYN applications, dermatology, dentistry, and even for treating certain uh, venereal diseases and viral diseases. Uh, Germany was the first country to start manufacturing medical ozonators and to use ozone oxygen mix mixtures in vascular surgery, uh, dentistry, and other applications. The quartz ozone generator used in the devices we distribute are actually um, sourced from Germany. And uh, according to the therapeutic concentration of the ozone, you can modulate its effects. It can be antiviral, it can be antibacterial, it can be um, antifungal, and it can also create other benefits with the hyperoxygenation and the recruitment uh, capabilities of it. So how does O3 work in medical applications? Um, so it's got quite a few. Uh, it actually has an anti-inflammatory effect. So ozone is com commonly injected into inflammatory joints uh, to reduce um, proteoglycan activity, uh, and the inflammatory response uh, inside joint spaces particularly. Um, it has an effect on prostaglandins and also addresses and affects the pH level very effectively. So it can be anti-acidic in that regard as well. So when you're dealing with muscular disorders where there's uh, lactic acid, scar tissue, et cetera, it can benefit in that as well. Ozone also has an analgesic effect uh, because it creates albumins and algopeptides, and that'll actually work on the nerve endings and damaged tissues uh, and reduce the pain response. It's one of the reasons ozone is so commonly used and so effective in the treatment of peripheral neuropathy because it has the ability to stop overactive nerve signals that produce pain as well as to hyperoxygenate and create reformation or stimulate uh, reformation 
rather, of the myelin sheath surrounding nerve endings. So it can not only treat the symptoms of neuropathy, but also the root cause of it. Uh, it also has a strong immune modulating effect <clears throat> uh, due to its interaction with lipid structures on cellular membranes. And you can use a low ozone concentration um, to promote um, reduction of uh, phagocytic cells, monocytes and macrophages, so where you've got destruction of tissue. So if you think about like an osteoarthritic joint where you've got bone-on-bone -bone contact and you're starting to break down cartilage and bone tissue can be used in that effect. Uh, it can also stimulate cytokines and create synthesis of other cellular tissues. So it has a regenerative property in and of itself. Although the primary way we use ozone is combined with other clinical applications. That being said, ozone by itself can be used and has been shown very effective, and I'll show some before and after pictures, uh, in wound care, uh, in peripheral neuropathy. Uh, there's actually a good amount of research published on ozone for treating macular degeneration. Uh, many applications in rheumatism, arthritis, and osteoarthritis. And with the whole COVID-19 pandemic going on, there's been a lot of talk about potentially using ozone as a treatment because it was used during the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic and also in the sub-Saharan Africa uh, outbreak of HIV and AIDS before it got under better control recently uh, to help ablate viral pathogens. Most commonly, it was used to scrub oxygen systems in hospitals, but it's also been used in direct administration into patients uh, to treat those conditions as well. So there's a couple countries, specifically Germany, Italy, and China, that are very big proponents of ozone. In fact, in Italy, uh, ozone therapy is used as an alternative to Botox and facial fillers. They actually inject ozone uh, into fine lines and wrinkles uh, as an anti-aging treatment uh, in Italy very commonly. If you want to look that up and check it out, it's pretty unique. Um, so let's look at some actual results of ozone from the clinical literature. And I'm sure all of you being healthcare providers are familiar with MRSA um, and some of your patients that maybe even suffered from it post-operatively. If they had a joint replacement or a surgical procedure, it's something that the medical community has a really hard time uh, controlling uh, in the surgical space. Uh, the, on the left-hand side of this slide, we see both a laboratory uh, application and a real clinical application of just simply ozonated water. One of the things I'll show you today is how you can use a diffuser to ozonate water for drinking or to ozonate sterile saline for injection or IV infusion. And this is the antiviral effects of ozonated water on Staphylococcus aureus and MRSA in one minute uh, after exposure to the ozonated water. So not only is it very effective at killing these very um, defensive substances that don't respond to most commercial cleaners and antimicrobial cleaners, uh, but it does so very quickly as well. Uh, this picture down here is a patient that was actually suffering from a MRSA infection and this is after the wound was debrided. So you can see the entire size and depth of that wound. Uh, and then here is after two months of treatment with ozone. Now, if you've ever known anybody to have a MRSA infection, it's common for them to even see limbs amputated. So to have this type of recovery and regeneration of uh, epithelial tissue in just an eight-week period is pretty impressive. Um, I didn't have pictures of it to share on today's presentation, but I'm actually working with a vascular surgeon locally here in Tampa on a patient who had a compound wound of the lower leg from a motorcycle accident. And um, the majority of the muscle and skin on the front of the tibia was completely lost in the accident. And over the course of two years, we've been able to regenerate almost all of that tissue. This is someone who was supposed to have an amputation. Um, so hopefully we'll have some pictures and uh, a published case study on that shortly. Uh, and we just Please. used allograft uh, mesenchymal stem cells to on that application. Excuse me? Was that a question? Oh, maybe just somebody forgot to mute. Okay. So here are a wound care and a peripheral neuropathy application. Um, now, this one's pretty interesting. This is from a clinic in Michigan. I'll just read this patient's testimonial real quickly for you. I had seen multiple surgeons and wound management specialists in the last two years without any success. I was told that I had developed an infection in my foot, osteomyelitis, and was told that the treatment for it was partial amputation in my foot since all the antibiotics had failed. So this was when the patient was told they needed the amputation, and this is only six weeks later after ozone therapy. So 
obviously the wound's not too big in its size, but look at the depth of that wound. I mean, that wound is going down to the level of the bone, and here you have a complete closure after only six weeks. So ozone's very effective in wound care. So when you see patients that have peripheral neuropathy and they have non-healing ulcerative wounds secondarily, that's where the bagging of ozone comes in. But even when people don't have non-healing wounds, after you do a platelet-rich plasma injection or a mesenchymal stem cell injection into a neuropathic foot or hand, you can really increase the effectiveness by applying topical ozone with the bagging or even buffering your injectable, your PRP, or your allograft product with ozonated saline or even ozonating it directly. I'll show you how to do both of those. So why isn't ozone mainstream yet if there's all this evidence behind how well it is at treating these different conditions? And it really comes down to the fact that it's very inexpensive treatment and very inexpensive equipment and cost of goods. Um, and this is actually an excerpt from a clinical research study that I thought was just Don't worry, perfect. I in 20 minutes. I get Ozone's started. novel biochemical properties may make it a unique, safe, relatively inexpensive, and effective modality for the treatment of pain. In this particular case, it resolved the chronic condition when opiates were ineffective for even pain relief. Ozone therapy should be considered for institutional study despite its lack of financial reward lack of patentability. So in other words, Big Pharma can't make any money on this, so it hasn't really taken off in the United States, but you'll notice the countries where it has, like China, Germany, Italy, are either socialist countries or they have a social health care system, a single-payer system. So they're very interested in things that are effective, safe, and inexpensive. And that's why you'll see this more commonly used in international applications than here in domestic ones. So let's just real quickly look at the most common uses of ozone and what I think for regenerative medicine multidisciplinary practices such as yours are probably going to be the most common uh, applications and easy for you to perform in the facility uh, and to get good clinical outcomes with and to create some additional financial uh, remuneration and reward from. So uh, there's two different ways to apply ozone therapy to humans um, and animals, by the way. It's big in veterinary medicine. Um, in fact, in dogs that have problems with their fur or hot spots or scratching, instead of how we bag a limb in a human, they'll bag the whole dog right up to its neck, and they'll fill the whole bag. It looks like a giant hefty bag full of ozone, and it'll help the dogs to grow their fur back and stop the hot spots and so forth. So it has other applications beyond humans, but obviously since nobody on here today is a vet, uh, we'll just stick to the human applications. So you've got a topical application, and you've essentially got an internal application. So on the topical application, um, a lot of uh, folks will ozonate oils and then use those oils topically, um, although I don't know if that really falls inside the scope of what you all do. So I'm focusing on using ozonation of saline and ozone, what's called bagging, where you attach a sealed uh, element to the limb that's affected uh, and you hook it up to the ozone generator and a low volume of ozone flows through that bag. Um, and the ozone is absorbed very efficiently through the skin um, and very effectively and in a much higher dose than you can do with the fluid uh, when you apply it as a gas. Now, a lot of folks will inject it as a gas. Uh, that's very common. Um, I'm going to talk more about injecting it as a fluid today because when you inject it as a gas, it does have the ability to potentially cause an embolism. Now, obviously, as you're doing an injection, you're going to pull back on the plunger. You're going to make sure you're not in a vascular structure. But nevertheless, there's still a potential for risk there. So if you ozonate a fluid like saline or PRP or your allograft products that you're purchasing from New Life Biologics and so forth, you don't have to worry about that potential embolytic effect. Um, there's also something called extracorporeal plasma treatment, which is basically ozonated PRP. It's where you process platelet-rich plasma in one syringe. You've got your syringe full of ozone in another you attach it with a syringe connector or a stopcock, and you pass the ozone back and forth in the syringe with the PRP. And ozone very efficiently dissolves in fluid. That's one of the reasons why many physicians aren't worried about injecting it as a gas, because the, the clinical understanding is that if you're in a vein <clears throat> um, or an artery, that the ozone gas dissolves so quickly that before it ever gets back to the heart, it's, it's going to be a fluid, not a gas. Um, that being said, I, I still like to stay away from it for the minute risk factors associated with the use as a gas injectable. Uh, then there's also subcutaneous ozone injections into biologically active points or paravertebral intramuscular injections, basically trigger points. Ozone is used very commonly as a trigger point injection in place of an anesthetic like lidocaine or marcaine 
uh, in place of a corticosteroid like depomedrol or dexamethasone, uh, or in place of injecting uh, a prolotherapy solution, a sucralose solution, or using ozone in combination with those items is common too. But it's very effective in trigger point applications. And you can do that, of course, in the spine, in the paraspinals, in any musculature or soft tissue of the body. Uh, so let's talk briefly about each one of those applications and how you would do them inside your facilities. The first would be ozonated water uh, or ozonated sterile saline. Ozonated water uh, can be drunk for general health benefits. Um, it's very commonly used to promote hair and nail growth. That's one of its primary applications in Italy, for example. Um, also, with GI doctors, it's very commonly used uh, for people that have esophageal cancer, gastritis, ulcers, uh, to treat the destruction of those linings, and also because of its antimicrobial, uh, bacteriostatic, um, viralytic uh, properties uh, that will help to keep those patients from developing any further affections or comorbidities. Uh, it's very commonly used in dental surgical applications. Uh, they will use ozonated water um, as their wash for irrigation as opposed to using just regular um, saline because of its more enhanced antimicrobial properties. So it will stop people from developing any type of infection. It also has been shown <clears throat> to ablate uh, periodontal disease uh, as well, both in humans and animals. It's commonly used in dogs uh, for, for that application. Ozonated sterile saline can also be prepared in advance, and then you can buffer that with your other injectables. So this image right here to the left shows one of the diffuser stones being used. In this particular application, it's creating a, a, a wash that's going to be put topically on a wound. Uh, if you want to create sterile saline for injection, you would essentially take a bottle of sterile saline and you would pass the diffuser into it, and the diffusers are disposable. You buy these for, I think, a dollar. Uh, we have them for sale. And um, it's antimicrobially um, and non-pyrogenically sterilely packaged. And you put that down into the sterile saline and you let the ozone generator run uh, this ozone gas through the saline and it will dissolve in the gas. A lot like if you've ever had an aquarium, how the oxygen dissolves into the water. You see those stones that bubble up in the aquariums, right? Same process. We're dissolving oxygen into the fluid. You can then use that sterile saline as a buffer for your other injectables. Now, this is what the um, diffuser method looks like, um, just to show a little video um, so you have an idea of, of what you're looking for. So this is a diffuser attached to an ozone generator, and it very literally just bubbles through the water, uh, a lot like that example I told you uh, with, with an aquarium. Um, so that's the process. If it's for drinking, it can be non-sterile, and you can use a multi-use diffuser like this one here. Um, or if it's for sterile use, you'd use a disposable diffuser only one time uh, for that sample. <clears throat> Now, you, for sterile applications, you can also pass ozone gas back and forth between a syringe. When you use an ozone generator, the ozone generator is going to take oxygen in from an oxygen tanker, an oxygen concentrator. I'll show you that. It's going to go through a machine. It's going to strike that O2 with energy and create the O3 process. And then that machine is going to fill up the syringe with a colorless um, mild odor gas. So you can see it filling the syringe with ozone here. You would then attach that syringe through a stopcock like the one pictured here and pass it back and forth with your syringe that's full of PRP or full of your buffered allograft material that you're going to use uh, for injection uh, or other procedures inside the practice. So depending on how you've prepared your ozone, um, again, you can inject it as a gas, uh, albeit with the risk factors associated with that. You can dissolve it in sterile saline and use that as an injectable and buffer it with lidocaine, corticosteroids, any other product you want to utilize. Or you can buffer it directly, um, syringe to syringe, through a lower connector or a stopcock with your platelet-rich plasma preparation or your allograft preparation. And just if you're worried about time, you pass it back and forth about 20, 30 times between the two syringes. It takes maybe a minute uh, to do that and to create the ozonated injectable. So it's not a lot of work to add ozone to the procedures you're already doing. Uh, now, it can be used subcutaneously or intramuscularly. When it's done in that application, about one milliliter is used for each injection, uh, and it's a concentration of about 10 milligrams a liter. 
Um, because we're dealing with a gas here, you're going to notice that it's not going to be per, per ml, it's going to be per, per liter, because um, it's done by pressure of the air. In periarticular injections, so small um, articular joints, about 1 to 3 ml is used with a concentration between 10 and 15 milligrams a liter. Intramuscular injections can be higher volume, 10 to 20 mLs, uh, and are at about the same atmospheric concentration at 10 to 15 milligrams a liter. Then intraarticular injections are done with concentrations that are slightly higher, about 15 milligrams a liter, uh, and a volume between 1 and 5 mLs for minor joints, 5 and 7 for middle joints, and 20 mLs or so for major joints like a hip um, or potentially even a knee uh, can be utilized. And then I also want to cover briefly ozone bagging of the limbs. So you purchase a disposable bag, looks like this one, it has a little valve to let the ozone in, a little valve to let the ozone out. Um, if you bag the patient, this is about what they look like. If any of you are using our knee brace, um, you'll know in the knee brace it comes with a suspension sleeve, that rubberized, um, cottonized um, kind of wrap. That's actually what I use to seal the bags. These are the uh, under brace sleeves from the from the knee brace, I multi-purpose them and use them when we're doing leg bagging. And then just this is a close-up of, of a hand uh, bag. And here you've got your oxygen tank. It goes into your ozone generator. Your ozone generator produces the O3, flows it into the bag. And then as it flows through the bag, it's going to come out of the bag in this outlet. And this little cylinder here is called an ozone destructor. Ozone gas um, is somewhat reactive. If you inhale ozone gas directly, it will burn the membranes and linings of the nose and throat and lungs. So whenever you're producing ozone, uh, if you're not dissolving it into a fluid, you want to make sure that you're destroying the ozone when you're done with it, not just letting it out into the air. So that's what these ozone destructors are for. And this ozone bagging methodology is extremely effective in treating microvascular disorders, peripheral neuropathy, um, non-healing ulcerative wounds. It's been used to treat gangrene, bed sores, burns, um, and it's very effective in that application. It's even been used to treat some subcutaneous and superficial cancerous tumors. Um, and before you apply ozone to the skin, you just want to dampen the skin. That actually helps it to absorb the ozone more efficiently because ozone dissolves in fluid. Um, so if you wipe down the surface you're about to treat with water or saline, then put the bag on, uh, it's much more effective. If you're doing this on a patient that has an ulcerative wound, you want to put a, a dressing over the wound. You want to take a piece of gauze um, or some type of sterile um, tissue, and you want to dampen that and cover that wound before bagging. Uh, and that will help to not only hyper-concentrate in that area, um, but it's also going to help to debride uh, the wound a little bit through the antimicrobial uh, bacteriocytic process that takes place. Contraindications for ozone therapy. Anybody that has a blood coagulation disorder, this would be like hemophiliac patients, but not uh, people that have other blood disorders uh, like sickle cell anemia, they can still be treated just fine. If it has any known internal bleeding or ruptured organs, uh, thrombocytopenia, any previous ozone allergy, if somebody's had a reaction to ozone previously, it's extremely rare, but it can happen. Typically happens when it's inhaled and we're not using it in that application. Um, it is contraindicated in patients that have or have suffered stroke recently, um, and anyone who has an ozone intolerance, um, unless you're in a high smog area like Los Angeles, Orange County, or, or Mexico City or so forth, probably don't know anybody that has an ozone intolerance because the levels in our atmosphere are too low to trigger one. Uh, but if you do have anybody in those areas of high, high pollution um, that are sensitive to ozone, uh, you want to be careful with, with those folks. Not that they're going to have an interaction, but just to be safe. Uh, ozone in low concentrations uh, is known to produce a hypocoagulation effect. Um, so any drugs that decrease blood coagulation, anticoagulants, aspirin, et cetera, are meant to be discontinued during the course of ozone therapy because uh, they will contraindicate it. So let's quickly go over the equipment, and then we can open up for questions. Um, this is the clinical ozone generator that we offer for sale, uh, the MD520. And then we also have a very compact one called the MD500. These are very inexpensive devices. 
The compact unit's only $750. The clinical uh, one is $1,500. And basically the difference between the two is in your clinical model, it has multiple presets for concentration. So you won't have to adjust the um, density. You know how we were going through 5, 10, 15 milligrams per liter. You can basically preset those. So the one touch, you can create the type of ozone necessary for that treatment. And it has two outlets. So you have the ability to fill two syringes or fill two bags at the same time uh, or so forth. We tend to use this clinical model for preparing the liquid injections, uh, whether we're ozonating saline or we're ozonating PRP or ozonating allograft injections or whatever the case might be. I tend to use the compact ones for the bagging. I have four of these set up next to armchairs and the patients sit there either if they're actually blood draw chairs. So they have somewhere to rest their arm if we're bagging their arm, uh, and then we can bag their, their leg and their lower extremity if it's for a neuropathy of the foot. And then I have these little units running uh, to do the bagging treatments. And we keep the larger unit in the back uh, by where we're preparing our PRP with our centrifuge and where we have our cryo storage and so forth for the allograft products to create the injectables. Because this one moves a little faster. It's not just that you have twice the output here. I mean, it'll fill a syringe, like in that video you saw, it'll fill a syringe in about 15 seconds, um, whereas this unit takes about twice as long to do so. So a little bit faster with the uh, larger clinical model as well. And here's how you set it up. Uh, you can basically run an ozone generator one of two ways. You can run it off of an oxygen tank, which is my preferred methodology. You can get your oxygen tanks filled by medical supply company or even by, I like to use welding supply companies. Um, it costs about $15 to fill an E-sized uh, clinical oxygen tank, uh, which is about a three-foot tall tank, and that'll run an ozone generator for about, ah, uh, man, you can produce about 1,000 mLs out of that, maybe a little bit more. So it'll run your ozone generator for months off of one filling of the tank, and you just attach a flow regulator to it so you know the pressure going into your ozone generator. Set your ozone generator for an output, and it's that simple. The other way to do it if you don't want to keep refilling tanks or having multiple tanks is to use an oxygen concentrator. But these oxygen concentrators are pretty expensive. They're at least two or three grand, some more than that. And you would have to hook that up to an O2 flow meter to make sure it was creating enough concentration of oxygen to make the ozone generator actually be effective. The advantage of the oxygen concentrator is you're never going to have to go refill it. You just turn it on and you're off to the races. Um, but I do like the consistency of the oxygen cylinders and the fact that there's not that big upfront expense of buying a generator. But the oxygen can be supplied into the ozone generator to create the O3 in either of these two formats. Um, and then just to cover the cost of the equipment and the ordering process, it is very inexpensive. Uh, one of the things I want to point out about ozone is, is really twofold. The equipment and the supplies to get started are under $2,000 for everything you'll need. Um, possibly less, depending on your application. You can use the compact generator, which is only 750, or the clinical model for 1500. The destructors are only necessary to hook up to the bagging, and they're multi-use. You don't have to buy an ozone destructor for every time you're bagging somebody's limb. You can reuse it dozens, even hundreds of times uh, before you have to replace it, and they're only 30, 40 bucks. And of course, you've got your syringes, you've got your bags if you want to bag people. Um, the ozone bags are about 40 bucks, um, but um, the, you can reuse them with the same patient. I take a black Sharpie marker and I write the patient's name on it, um, and I put it in a baggie for them, a Ziploc baggie, and they bring it back into the office each time they have their treatment done. So you can reuse that bag with one patient over and over and over again. It's not like you're spending 30, 40 bucks every time you do a bagging treatment. The diffuser stone for um, ozonating the saline is 11 bucks. And then the multi-use one, if you want to ozonate water, uh, we have for 96. That one in the video I showed you is actually 350 bucks. If you look up titanium diffusers for ozone, they're pretty expensive. So we have a really high quality one, uh, very inexpensively. And if you need an auction regulator, that's a one-time purchase. So you can see that with everything that you would need to acquire to get started doing ozone, uh, it is not costly. Then your cost of goods moving forward is literally a couple of pennies for each procedure because your only consumable is the oxygen that you're using, uh, and then, of course, your syringe, your needle, et cetera, for whatever your application might be. So unlike many of the things we do in regenerative medicine where it's extremely costly, this is a really inexpensive treatment option. And one of the things I do with ozone is I sometimes run it as a promotion. 
So if patients come into the office for a risk-free consultation, that includes their first ozone procedure. I actually will give ozone treatment away as a loss leader to get people into the practice. And to give you an idea of what ozone typically costs, it's usually about $350 is the average market rate for a single injection of ozone. You can call around to other providers locally if you've got anybody in the area that's doing it. Um, if you don't, you don't know where to call, uh, there's an organization called the American pro Lozone Association where they ozonate prolotherapy. And uh, they have a registry on their website of all their providers around the country. So you can call the ones close to you, see what they're charging for ozone injections. If you want to try and get an idea of your local market rate, in my experience, though, typically an injection of ozone is usually around $250, and a topical application of ozone is usually around $250. It's almost pure profit because your cost of goods is very little. Um, I actually add ozone into our regenerative medicine treatment plans at no cost if our patients prepay. So if we present the treatment plan and they decide to start that plan the same day as their consult, they get ozone therapy for free. Uh, and I use it as a tool to help get our patients to move towards committing um, to mesenchymal stem cells or a course of PRP or whatever the case might be more effectively. Um, and because of how inexpensive it is, I have the ability to do that. So it's up to you how you want to employ it as a business tactic. You can use it either as a low-cost alternative to regenerative medicine treatments for patients that don't have the ability to get approved for financing or that don't want to pay out of pocket if their insurance doesn't cover it. You can have something that's the cost of a copay, essentially, and, um, and get people to move uh, into the treatment pretty uh, efficiently. Um, but I actually like to combine it with other regenerative medicine techniques, not use it in place of them, and it just boosts the effectiveness. And my first personal experience with ozone came with um, the Laser Spine Institute. If any of you are familiar with that um, group, they're based or were based out of Tampa here um, before they had some financial issues. And uh, they were doing intradiscal injections of mesenchymal stem cells, and they were getting very poor outcomes. Because if you're familiar with the anatomy of the spinal disc, it's not very vascular. It's mostly an avascular structure and gets its oxygenation through end plate transfer with the vertebra, usually when the patient's sleeping and the pressure uh, of the intraspinal canal is reduced. Uh, and that's when you get that vascular transference into the disc. So if you inject mesenchymal stem cells into uh, the nucleus repulsus of a disc or even the annulus, the stem cells will die because they don't have an oxygen supply. So we buffered the injectable with ozonated saline and had much better survival rate uptake in clinical outcomes when we were combining ozone with mesenchymal stem cells because it gave a captive oxygen supply to help those stem cells survive and to uh, home and differentiate and proliferate. Um, so it's a very good adjunctive therapy to combine with any type of stem cell procedure. Um, and then also when we're doing a PRP injection, we're stimulating microvascular formation with PRP, right? Especially if we're using it in a, a neuropathic application. Well, if we're stimulating vascular function and we're hyperoxygenating at the same time, well, now we're just getting double effect of creating hyperoxygenation locally. And as you know, that's very good for stimulating cellular metabolism and growth. Um, so that's how we apply ozone. It's a little background on ozone, the equipment and supplies we use to deliver the ozone. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing any of the ozone generators or supplies, we'll include that in the follow-up email to today's presentation, and you can send it back to orders at juventix.com or give us a call toll-free at 866-693-4777. Uh, if you'd like to get started with it uh, today. That being said, I'd like to open up for any questions anyone might have at this point in time. All right, excellent. Everybody, you're unmuted. Do we have any questions so far? I got a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, this is Dr. Chai. Listen, I, I've been driving. I tried to get online while I was driving. And I couldn't hear anything. Is this going to be recorded so I can go back and listen to it anywhere? Yes, sir. The whole thing is recorded, video and audio. It takes us a little bit to prepare that, but we will have that both on the website portal and out via email shortly. Okay. Thank you. I just hooked on about a minute ago. You're welcome. Hi. Hi, hi Dr. Liberti. I've got a question for you. Uh, yes. 
So what is the training actually like? So we went through the training here, but this is pretty pretty basic, not basic, but there's a lot of uh, information to get get here. So what is your training like? So let's say I wanted to sign my office up. What would the training look like? How long would it take to get my office running? What do you think it would be? Well, in the short term, we have some video training that shows you how okay. to set up the ozone generator, how to ozonate uh, different fluids like PRP and so forth, and a little bit of in-clinic self-training. Prior to this whole COVID-19 pandemic, we were actually going to do a live clinical training um, in concert with the March training seminar in Orlando. We were going to hold a Friday session on that at no cost. But we, of course, had to cancel that because that was the same week that all the social distancing orders came down and gatherings of 50 or more people were canceled. Um, as soon as we have the opportunity to get back to a live seminar setting, we are going to hold a hands-on clinical training course on the Friday prior to uh, that weekend seminar at no cost. So once we have the ability to get back to it, whether it's May, whether it's June, hopefully it's not going to go past that. Um, we will be having a free live training course on ozone therapy combined with other regenerative techniques such as um, amniotic fluids, PRP, uh, mesenchymal stem cells from allograft material. And I'm actually hoping when we do the live event that we can do both uh, musculoskeletal orthopedic, uh, peripheral neuropathy and wound care and aesthetics. You can use this uh, in combination with facial aesthetics, with hair restoration, very effective in that regard as well, even though we didn't really cover any of the aesthetic applications today. So when we do the live training, we're actually hoping to do both. And basically the short way to get started with the ozone is if you're ozating liquid, you already, you already know how to do it. You're already injecting something in the facility. All you do now is you dissolve O3 in that injectable, and you're performing the procedure the exact same way you currently do. It's really the only thing that you have to learn uh, to apply it to your existing applications is just how to run the generator, which is so simple. You're literally just attaching yeah. it uh, to the oxygen tank, hitting a preset, and 15 to 30 seconds later, your ozone's prepared. You pass it back and forth with your injectable through a lure connector, and you're off to the races. It dissolves in the liquid. I got you. So currently, currently we're doing a PRP. We do stem cells. We do exosomes. We just have not graduated to here, so I'm on board for this. So, but I was concerned about office training, making sure that the office staff knows exactly how to do it. It seems pretty complicated, but I bet it's not. Uh, uh, but it's anything learning, you know, you got a learning curve. So I just wanted to find yes, out sir. about about that. So there's no reason to, should we call today and say that I'm interested and let me know when the training is or how does that work? What's your... Once, well, whenever the next, weekend seminar is, whether it's able to be May, June, et cetera, the Friday before that event, we will be doing this training. It's just a matter of we, have to, it's, we don't have an, any reduction of the national stay-at-home order yet. So once that's lifted, okay. we can do the live training. Uh, in the meantime, okay, we can great. get you the video training techniques. And if you purchase the ozone generator and supplies and you use the video training, you say, hey, we're really having a hard time figuring out. Uh, without the live training, you know, you can return it at no cost and we'll refund your purchase until you, such time as you can attend the live training. So how do I get my hands on the video training now? Uh, we will email it to you and then we'll also add it to the portal. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate everybody's time here today. Um, it was nice to be able to share this technique with you. We've been using it for a while with great success. Probably the least expensive thing we do uh, in practice from a cost of goods perspective. So it definitely gives us some flexibility with some of those promotions I talked about. And it's something you can add into your current regenerative medicine treatment lineup without creating much additional expense for your patients, but while also creating a pretty amazing profit center for yourselves on a percentile basis. I know we're only talking about a couple hundred dollar procedure here, but the cost of goods is literally two or three bucks, including your syringes, needles, et cetera. So it is almost pure profit, even though it's a smaller dollar amount. Um, and it's every little bit counts, especially right now, that's being a little slower uh, from the social distancing, all the stay at home orders, right? And there is an upside to this because of its antiviral and antibacterial nature. When people are really concerned about COVID-19 and other infectious diseases, this is antiviral, it's antimicrobial. I even saw a protocol for ozone where they're taking the ozonated saline and they're using it as a nasal irrigation and a mouth gargle um, because it's been shown that you can kill COVID-19 
in the nasal canal and in the throat uh, by doing that. So there's actually some uh, functional medicine facilities and some uh, alternative um, naturopathic facilities that are promoting ozonated water uh, for the treatment of, of COVID-19. Not that I would jump on that bandwagon. I just feel dirty promoting anything about COVID-19, even if it works. But uh, it is something out there that's kind of relevant to uh, the times. Um, so I hope this was insightful. Uh, look forward to getting the rest hey, of the man. information to you all. And if you want to get started, we're here to help. Yes, sir. I am on the portal, and I can't figure out where to go to find this stuff. Can you give me some directions? Because it's not up there yet. Um, so after today's presentation, we're going to edit this video, and we'll probably put a new um, root directory or folder on there for Ozone, um, and we'll follow up with you on that. We do have a list of everyone who attended today, so we'll be able to email and notify you when that becomes available. Hey, I do okay. have a question for you before we go. Go ahead. You know, there's a couple of, uh, there's a couple of uh, air purifier systems out there, uh, ozone generator air purifiers. What, do you think, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. about those? So there's really two types of ozone generators. You've got your ozone generators that are air purifiers, which are used more to treat a space than a person. Right. Um, those are like the ones right. you would use in mold applications and so forth. They produce a lower concentration than when you're going to get from an ozone generator. So an ozone air purifier is creating about one to a maximum of maybe three milligrams per liter. And in our clinical applications for ozone, we're trying to create a minimum of 10 milligrams a liter. So they're producing sure. about a third of the therapeutic concentration of ozone. Um, for medicinal application, you would want to use something that has a higher concentrate. Now, if you're ozonating water, you could theoretically hook up a low volume ozone generator like that and just let it percolate uh, that fluid for hours and you'd eventually reach the same concentration. But in the clinical application, especially if you're gonna try and use it for injection techniques, you wanna have the ability to have it produced really quickly. These ozone generators have the ability to fill um, a syringe about an ml a second. So you can fill, yep. um, say, a 20 ml syringe um, in 20 seconds and be doing a hip. Uh, whereas if you're yeah. using a lower volume ozone generator, you really can't even do that because the concentration just wouldn't be high enough. Um, even the yeah, cheapest no, ozone I, I generators think... you'll find out there are three or four hundred bucks. So it's not monumentally more expensive to purchase a medical grade one that does the higher concentrations. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I wasn't trying to compare one or the. Uh, I mean. One, get one and not get the other. But I think that, you know, in fact, I just happened to purchase one of these two days ago. Uh, and I just, it just, I said, wow, I just, that's right, I just purchased one of these. But so it, it would uh, release negative ions into the air, but it, it's not going to be anything as, in terms of what we're talking about today. Probably not. Um, having a look at the device you purchased, and then just two other things to point out in that regard. One is um, if you're using a medicinal grade one, you have to have an ozone destructor because the amount of ozone that it produces much higher concentration than you would get from an air treatment ozone device. So that's why these ozone generators that we sell have a ozone destructor uh, built into them. So any of the excess gas is um, destroyed uh, so that it doesn't affect the local atmosphere. Likewise, when you're doing the bagging of the limbs, you have to have the separate ozone destructor so that as it comes out of there, um, you're not releasing that into the uh, local atmosphere of your practice, your treatment room, et cetera. And then that ozone generator you currently have, you may still find use for it. Uh, like, we'll review it with you. Maybe you use that one for the bagging if you have patients that suffer from neuropathies, and then you can use the medicinal grade one for your injectable. Something else I've seen being done, really interesting, is in spinal injections, um, it almost looks like if you've ever seen the saran cling wrap where you press down and it seals, they have a, a, um, a cellophane type material like that. And it's like a wound dressing product. And I've seen them put it in a square on the spine above where they've done like a facet injection or an epidural injection. And then they ozone gas bag that area right above where they did the injection. I have not done that yet clinically. Uh, but I'm exploring that application. It looks really interesting, and I think it could be a good supplemental to what we do, especially when we're working with mesenchymal stem cells, because they are very um, sensitive to oxygen. If they do not have enough oxygen concentration, they are less effective. 
So having the ability to create a captive oxygen supply, especially in patients that are vascularly um, limited, your patients with diabetes um, or any type of uh, microvascular disorders, you're typically going to see a little less and a little slower effectiveness when you treat those patients with regenerative medicine because of the paracrine response not being as strong in that individual. So when you use O3 in combination with those cases, you can mitigate that comorbidity and get a more usual and typical positive clinical outcome uh, on those cases. Great. Thank you. I have a You're question. Um, Go ahead. Um, I'm curious. I have two questions. Do you sell the, um, the generator, the ozone generator? And the second question is, do you ever advise your clients to take any binders because the ozone is killing parasites at the same time? Ooh, great question. Um, we do sell the generators. I've got the compact unit for 750 and the medicinal, uh, the clinical unit that uh, has two uh, ports on it to fill two syringes at a time for 1500 So we do sell the generators. They last uh, for basically sorry, the ever, by the way, uh, Actually, these I was ports thinking, generators. Uh, the concentrator, that's the one I wanted to know. Do you sell the concentrator? Oh, the oxygen concentrator? Yeah. No. That's, Those okay. I don't. Um, or the oxygen cylinders. I can sell you an oxygen cylinder empty, but I okay. can't ship an oxygen cylinder that's been filled because it's explosive. Um, okay. So we can provide empty tanks to you, and then you'd have to fill them locally. We do sell right. the flow regulators and the flow meters. The oxygen God. concentrators are pretty pricey. But I have mm-hmm. found a good place for them. Um, dot med, D-O-T-M-E-D dot com. It's like eBay, but for medical supplies. And they've got some used oxygen concentrators on there, particularly that have come out of like rentals in patients' mm-hmm. homes um, for like one half or one third of their list price. They're still about two grand um, to get the least expensive oxygen concentrator that will come around. Um, so you've got to use it for a long time to kind of hit that log curve where you've saved money versus refilling an oxygen tank. We use the E-size oxygen cylinders in our facility, and um, I'd say that they last for about six months on average. And okay. we do at least two or three ozone procedures daily, um, so probably 15, 20 procedures a week, and we get about a half a year out of an, out of an E-size oxygen tank. Um, so okay. it's um, it lasts for quite a while. Pretty efficient this process. Great. Oh, uh, which site was a, that again, uh, Dr. Liberty? That you said for his lucky pay for medical equipment. What was that? Uh, dot med. D O T M E D. Dot com. Oh. I did okay. buy an dot oxygen med. concentrator because I wanted to try that technique with the generator. I wanted to see if a it produced the same quality of of output a product which once I figured out how to get the flow right on it, it did. Um, and then the other consideration was the cost savings factor of it. And we just found that there really wasn't much of a cost savings factor associated with it. So I have that one uh, concentrator. And honestly, I use it when I exercise now. I'm riding my recumbent bicycle or on the treadmill or even lifting some free weights. I took it home. <laughs> I just use it while I'm exercising to get a little more benefit from it. Mm-hmm. And then the question back with the parasites, do you do any kind of binders with scrub? Do you suggest any to, to the clients? I don't right now. Um, mm-hmm. That's not something I've explored yet. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and one last thing, slightly off topic. Um, I know everybody's kind of looking for ways to drive new patient flow right now as people don't want to come out of their house and so on and so forth. I did my first webinar for patients last Thursday in place of doing a live workshop presentation. I've been doing a live workshop presentation for years and years. They've been extremely successful. And really the basis of how I've built most of my business, um, not being able to do those had me pretty concerned. So I tried doing a virtual version through a Zoom meeting um, last Thursday, and we had 32 potential patients attend. 16 of them booked consultations, so we had a 50% conversion rate from attendance to consultation, and seven of them have already signed up for treatment packages, and we've already done our first injection on one of those cases. So if you've not yet started doing web-based new patient workshops, I know it's kind of off-topic from Ozone, um, but that worked very well. 
Uh, and one of the digital marketing vendors that, um, that your group works with, that Dr. Singer's group worked with, RC Digital, Tina Cruz, that's who we use to promote the digital workshop presentation. It was very effective. Um, and I, I do have a recording of that presentation as well. It wasn't on um, stem cells. It was on visco supplementation and PRP. Um, so it was mostly on an insurance-based procedure. And then a little bit of regenerative medicine sprinkled in. We're doing a regenerative medicine one next week. Um, to see how that works. But the show rate was great. The conversion rate was pretty good. Um, the amount of cases we started off of it was really fantastic, considering it was about half the price of what it costs us to do a live workshop. Um, so that's kind of timely information as well. And Jonathan, I'll get you and Jim a copy of that um, remote webinar I did on the Zoom meeting. I recorded it. So you can share it with your uh, your customers. It was it was pretty pretty effective. So as we're talking about stuff that's relevant to this whole COVID-19 pandemic, uh, that is a little gem we found to be quite advantageous. Who was the marketing company you used again? What was it? RC Digital. That's Tina Cruz's yeah. company. She's one of the preferred oh, vendors great. with David Singer Enterprises and with our company. So you get, um, you get discounts for, for being a client okay, of Dr. Gotcha. Singer's or a client of ours. They do really good work. I highly recommend it. I've been using them for the live workshops for about three years. Uh, but this was my first oh, great. virtual workshop, and I was very, I was very pleased. I honestly didn't expect it to do that well. I went into it with very low expectations, and I uh, came out of it quite pleased. That's great. All right, everybody. Any other questions before we go? And again, appreciate your time today. Thank you. You're welcome. Y'all have a good one. Thanks again. <laughs>